Hi, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Linux Mint, my experiences using it, and some considerations before you're going to switch. Uh, so I've been using Linux Mint for quite a couple of months as of now, and it has been working very well. In fact, uh, probably I could say it works better than Windows. And in part one of my series on switching to Linux, I've actually told you why I did so. And all of those reasons came out pretty well. And I'm actually going to show you right now. So just to show how quick and efficient Linux Mint is compared to Windows, the uh, easiest way is probably just a little startup comparison. How long does it take for a computer to start up? So I'm going to do that with uh, Linux Mint first. There we go, starting up. about 19 seconds before desktop has fully loaded and now I can actually go ahead and uh, go into the system management and you can see right there the CPU cores are very loosely uh, loaded up so if I were to move the camera from its uh, position yeah we'll just see a little bit Focal distance, it's just a very low idle load. Like three, one, two, and nothing. <coughs> now let's shut down Linux Mint. Uh, four seconds and the computer has completely shut down. That's how few programs have to be closed before the computer can shut down properly. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with Windows. Of course the computer is turned off completely before the test. As you can see now. Eh? See, it's about 38 to maybe even 40 seconds until we get to the log on screen. And since I haven't been able to auto log in, I'm going to enter my pin code now. Now let's go to the task manager here. Into performance, and the CPUs are actually sort of uh, lowering its use from the startup, but apparently it's still very high even on our state. Although some processes for the startup are still going on well after the computer started up. But with that out of the way we go to about 22% uh, at the lowest point and that's only a valley. That's not constant. Uh, probably there's a lot of background applications. Uh, 
of that I can close things like uh, antivirus and uh, also the very core programs of the operating system. Now let's shut Windows down. The system just keeps going and going and going. It's been about 30 or 40 seconds, I can't even count as I speak. And uh, sometimes, uh, this time would actually, it's about 45, it would actually increase each of those annoying automatic updates. Uh, they always, or almost always, require a system reset. Uh, because Linux has a more efficient and also a live kernel as it's called, uh, that means programs are simply uh, shutting down, starting back up very quickly, so it doesn't require a full system reset to update everything. Uh, the only thing that does require a full system reset to update uh, is the kernel. So obviously the operating system has set up much more quickly is so much more efficient but it also directly saves a lot of time and money in terms of energy use of course that is and uh, another thing that is really interesting about Linux Mint is how quick programs start up in Windows I might have to click on a program icon uh, multiple times and hope it starts up only to find out the program has started multiple times in Linux it's just one click and it's on. Uh, and again, that's due to the way Linux applications are built. They, they'll be like a tank, they'll never truly fail. I've had some programs close down on me, but a single application crash can almost never, I truly mean never, take down the entire system with it. However, there are some considerations before you're going to switch to Linux. Uh, first of all, if you have any kind of Windows applications, and this is very obvious, that don't have a Linux version, Linux is not going to fly for you, obviously. Uh, unless you're going to use virtualization. And virtualizing a Windows system uh, is actually going to take up an additional layer of overhead above what Windows already uses. Though you can actually have a much smaller installation because it only has to run for a few programs. So overall, I still think it's going to be pretty good saving. Assuming your programs work in a virtualized environment at all. If they require a special kind of hardware, you're probably going to want a dual boot system anyway. Uh, next up is about the storage capacities uh, that you can uh, allocate to Linux if you are going to do a dual boot. There are two ways you can actually install Linux Mint. Uh, it's part two of my series on switching to Linux, I've assumed a dual boot setup in which you allocate some space to Windows and some space to Linux. Uh, well, I've gone with a pretty small amount of space, about 40 gigabytes I thought was okay. Uh, in the end it wasn't, but that was only because I've got an external hard drive, like lots of uh, people have to if they're working with large files, it's pretty important to have one anyway as a backup. So, Technically, you could use it as your sole uh, storage point for certain files, which I do, but it isn't always ideal because you have to hook up and sell with advice. I do, however, think if you are going to run a dual boot, it's better to allocate the majority to Windows and then just a small amount to Linux because Linux is just inherently so much more efficient, also in storage space. Another thing is that there are a lot and lot and lot of different distributions or distros. I've chosen Linux Mint because it's particularly easy to set up, easy to use, and particularly efficient as well. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of overhead. And a very large community in case something does go wrong. Uh, well, you might go for a different distribution, maybe on the, based on the looks of it, uh, or based on 
what you need to have. I've seen Popeyes, for example, by System76, has a more Mac OS-like interface. So if you have an uh, Intel Mac, obviously it won't run on our PowerPC or newer Apple Silicon Macs, you can actually install PopOS instead of or besides that Mac OS installation. It will still feel pretty much like at home, except you can have all the benefits of uh, Linux uh, as well. <sighs> Including the ability to sort of quickly go back to Mac OS if you want to. Uh, what I have to say, most programs you can be using on Mac OS have alternatives that were on the Linux, so they are available for Linux as well, again. Uh, the only difference with using a Mac is, as far as I can go, you cannot run Mac OS in a virtualization. Uh, again, because Apple wants to ensure you're only using Mac OS on an apple branded system. They want to make sure that you're hardware original and if you're on virtualization of course that's not the case you're using the VMware as it's hardware. But yeah when it comes to running Linux there are so many different distributions. Uh, some are more consumer oriented like Pop OS, Linux, Mint, Ubuntu, Debian, all of those. But we have those that only have a command line interface or uh, only the ability to be run remotely. And those are the perfect choice, in fact I should think the choice you must, must go for when you're setting up a server, like a file server. Because you want to have it on all the time. And it GUI basically is a little bit more overhead. That makes it convenient if you want to use it as a client or a product a creation device. But as a server, you're probably going to want as much storage space and as little energy as possible. Because that computer is going to be locked in a closet 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year during its lifetime probably. So, uh, yeah, just go for it. But there's also a lot of networking stuff when it comes to running a server. I'm not going to go into much detail, but those are actually the most important considerations when you're going to use Linux, whether you're switching to it completely or running it as a dual boot, a primary operating system, uh, or whether you're just repurposing an old PC to become your main PC for most of the daily stuff and keeping a separate high-end PC around just in case you want to use that quite a bit. In summary, uh, if you don't have that many Windows applications that need uh, specialised hardware to operate or that otherwise wouldn't run a virtualization, just go for it. Just it's all Linux. Make sure you uh, know which distribution you want to install first. See you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.